into talking about chemical equations and how to balance them. Things we need to talk about is how do we know that a chemical change has taken place? Chemical reactions really very often give us some visual signals. Um, sometimes not. Sometimes they're not always visible to you. So here are some clues. This is table six one from your book. Color changes. That's a pretty big one. A solid forms. This is when we take two aqueous solutions and combine them. And just to let you know, aqueous means dissolved in water. We actually have an example, a picture of that in a moment. Bubbles forming, that's a huge signal that a chemical reaction has happened. And of course, the old standby heat or flame, um, that definitely tells us that we've rearranged some atoms and sometimes heat can be absorbed, like when you're talking about uh, a cold pack. So here's a question for you. Looking at the picture, which is a battery in some water, identify a clue that indicates a reaction has occurred in the given image. Well, this time it looks like we're looking at the old bubbles. This one, has three Erlenmeyer flasks. So it says colorless hydrochloric acid is added to a red solution of cobalt 2 nitrate, turning the solution blue. I think this one is going to be the color changing. We will actually be doing, once we're back in person, um, what's called a titration and we'll be taking two clear liquids and looking for a color change. This is the aqueous solution one that I was talking about. This solution started out clear, colorless. This one is clear, but this dark yellow color. And then if you look here, this is nice and cloudy because what's happening as we're pouring these two solutions together is a solid is actually forming there. That's what makes it look cloudy. And in this case, it's a yellow solid. So a solid forms when a solution of sodium dichromate is added to a solution of lead nitrate. So this time we're seeing that solid form. So when we're talking about chemical reactions, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a little bit of a brief overview of how to write a chemical equation, which takes what we learned from first semester with writing formulas and combines that with the words um, that tell us that a chemical reaction has happened. Okay, so when we have a chemical reaction, the atoms are rearranged and we have what's called a chemical equation that represents a chemical reaction. Reactants are to the left, products are to the right. And we very often read this arrow as produces. We can use the words to form or making. Those are some of the different verbiage that we use for those. So in this case, we have methane combined with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Now notice all of these formulas are correctly written. Oxygen, remember, is one of our seven diatomic molecules. Those are the ones that we shaded yellow hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Remember, they look, they're, they're shaded, the yellow on your periodic table. All right, in a chemical reaction, atoms cannot be created and they can't be destroyed. 
You are not a wizard, Harry. You cannot just make stuff appear or disappear. Okay. All of the atoms that are present in the reactants must be accounted for among the products. They're arranged differently, but they didn't just appear or disappear. Okay. So in the end, we have to have the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the so here is an example of an unbalanced equation. That was the methane plus the oxygen producing the carbon dioxide and water. All right, so if I look at these from a molecular point of view, I have one carbon on the left and one on the right. I have four hydrogens on the left, but only two hydrogens on the right two oxygens and three oxygens. So what am I going to do to balance this? Well, what we need to do is we need to add a molecule of water on the left. Check that. Oxygen on the left, water on the right, and then I have one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, four oxygens, four oxygens. No, you're not going to have to draw pictures. This is just a visual representation. So then when we write this, we write CH4. Didn't change that. But look at what I did here in front of the O2 and here in front of the H2O. I put what are called coefficients. Those are the big numbers that you put out front, not the subscripts. I did not change any. Okay, one of the things as we learn how to write our own chemical equations is that the physical states are very often listed as part of the chemical equation. So the first thing we're going to talk about is your periodic table tells you what state to list things in if they're by themselves. Because remember, all of the elements that are written in black, when they're alone, those are solids at room temperature. The ones that we wrote in blue, those are the liquids when they're by themselves at room temperature. And the ones that we wrote in red are gas at room temperature when they're by themselves. And then don't forget also, like we just talked about, those seven diatomic molecules, like hydrogen is going to be H2, and it's a gas because we wrote it in red. Nitrogen is going to be N2. We wrote it in red, so it's a gas. Oxygen, O2, a gas. Fluorine, diatomic, gas. Chlorine, diatomic, gas. Bromine, diatomic, liquid, iodine, diatomic, solid. And that's only when those are by themselves, not when they're part of a compound. Okay, so here are the symbol abbreviations, S for solid, L for liquid, G for gas, and then aqueous. Remember, we talked a couple slides ago. This means dissolved in water. That is listed as AQ, aqueous. All right, here's an example. We have some solid potassium, and this is actually stored in mineral oil because it is extremely reactive with water, so it has to be kept under mineral oil so it doesn't react. Take a small piece of that, add it to water, and it produces a pretty strong flame, actually. And what we're making is hydrogen gas, which is what catches on fire, and potassium hydroxide that is aqueous. So again, looking at the solid for potassium, how do I know that? periodic table tells me. 
liquid water. We assume water is a liquid unless indicated otherwise. H2, hydrogen gas, diatomic, because hydrogen is by itself. Potassium hydroxide, potassium is one plus, hydroxide is one minus, so my formula is KOH, and the dissolved in water gives me the aqueous. So when a blue light shines on a mixture of hydrogen gas and chlorine gas, the elements react explosively to form gaseous hydrochloric acid. All right, hydrochloric acid. Acids are the ones that start with hydrogen. Chloric, that came from chlorine. Chlorine is one minus. Hydrogen is one plus. So I'm going to need HCl. So that's my product. So that's got to be either A or C, or I guess it could be D. So it's definitely ruled out B already. Hydrogen and chlorine gas. Well, that is not chlorine gas. Hydrogen, chlorine gas. That looks maybe... Oh, wait a minute. Nope, this is my right one. D is right because hydrogen and chlorine are diatomic in nature when they're by themselves. And for some reason, that doesn't line up. With how Writing a balanced equation, the principle that lies at the heart of the balancing process is the law of conservation of mass. We can't make things up here and we can't make things disappear. Atoms are neither created nor destroyed. When we do the formulas, when we write the formulas, we can't change those, right? So for something like sulfuric acid, H2SO4, you cannot change that formula Otherwise, it's no longer sulfuric acid. Okay, so once you write the formula, you can't mess with the subscript. All right, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas combine to form liquid water. All right, so we're going to write this, which we um, have written here. So I've got H2 plus O2 produces H2O. Now, I do not balance, and if you kind of think of it like this is a teeter-totter, right? I have two hydrogens over here. I have two oxygens, but on the left, I have two hydrogens and only one oxygen over here on the right. So let's again take a look at this from a molecular level. I personally like to make a list. I like a little list. I like to write my H and then I count how many are on both sides. I write my O, I count how many are on both sides. So I've got two hydrogens, two oxygens two hydrogen, well now I've got four because I added another molecule, so I've got four hydrogens, two oxygens. So that definitely doesn't balance yet. However, what I can do now is move back over to the right side, the left side, and add another, excuse me, hydrogen molecule. Well now that gives me four hydrogens and two oxygens. And now I balance. So when it's all I have two hydrogen molecules plus two one oxygen molecule producing two waters. Now that is the preferred way to write this. Now we could, if you were a little overzealous and went back and forth a few too many times, you might end up with something like this. Right? But if you check this, 4, 2, and 4 
all of those coefficients can be divided by 2. What we want when we're done with this is the smallest integers that make the equation balance. So when you're done, if you end up with something like a 3, a 6, a 3, and a 9, you will want to simplify that. And then you'd have a 1, which technically you just leave it blank because in chemistry we're very lazy and we don't write the 1s. So now we're going to balance this equation in standard form or lowest multiple integers, which that is always what I am going to be looking for. I will not specify that. I will assume that you know that. So here's my list. I've got F, E, and I've got O. Those are the list of my atoms. One iron, three oxygens. So I got one oxygen here, two here. On the right hand side, two irons, three oxygens. Well, that doesn't balance, now does it? Okay, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try putting a two over here in front of my FEO. Well, that doesn't help. I now have four oxygens and two irons. Oh wait, hold on a second. What if I put a two here? That gives me four irons, because two times two is four. Two times three, I get six oxygens. Aha! I am going to use my eraser, and you can use your eraser too, because you will probably do these in pencil. Hint, hint. Let's put a four there. So now I have four irons, four oxygens here, plus the two here. I now have six. Oh, look! Four on the left, four on the right. Four on the left, six on the left, six on the right. So, again, looking back at my problem, it says, what is the sum of the coefficients? So I've got a four here. Technically, in front of my oxygen, I have a 1, and then in front of my iron, I have a 2. So 2 plus 1 plus 4 is 7. Weird. Which of the following equations correctly balances the equation given below? There may be more than one correct balanced equation. If a balanced equation is incorrect, explain what is incorrect. All right, I got CaO plus C producing CaC2 plus CO2. Okay, well, the first thing I'm noticing about number one is it might balance, but look at what happened. They added a subscript. You cannot do that. You can't change the formula. All right, so now let's add these. Two calcium, two calcium, two oxygen, two oxygen, five carbon, four here, plus one is five. That one balances. So, oh, 2.5. Oh, this is weird. Okay, so it'll balance, I bet. Calcium, calcium, one oxygen, one oxygen because half of two is one, two and a half carbons, half of one, so I've got a half a carbon here and two carbons here, so that balances. And then the same thing here, four calcium, four calcium, four oxygen, two times two is four, 10 carbons, four times two is eight. I got eight of them there, plus two of them. Yep, that one balanced. So all three of those balance, but only one of them is the correctly written way. What we want is the lowest number of, in, the lowest possible integers that make it balance. So number two is the preferred answer.
All right. In the context of balancing a chemical equation, which of the following statements is false? Subscripts in the reactants must be conserved in the products, meaning they have to stay the same, right? So conserve, stay the same. Coefficients are used to balance the atoms on both sides. When one coefficient is doubled, the rest of the coefficients must also be doubled. Well, no, we know that's not true. We didn't do that. Phases are often shown for each compound, but are not critical to balancing the equation. That is true. So coefficients, yep, we do use those. So it's this one. Subscripts must be conserved. No, they do not. You don't need to have the same subscript. That's why we balance. All right. Notice these few things. The number of atoms of each type of element must be the same on both sides when you're done balancing. Subscripts must not be changed to balance the equation. Once you write a correct formula, don't be jacking around with it. A balanced equation tells us the ratio of the number of molecules that react and are produced in a chemical reaction. That makes sense, right? So for every one oxygen I need, oxygen molecule, I need two hydrogen molecules. Coefficients can be fractions, although they are usually the lowest integer multiples. In fact, I will say that 99.99% of the time, this is what you are going to see that is silly.